EMC Storage Integrator for Windows, also known as ESI, greatly simplifies the task of provisioning storage for your Windows and application environments. Customers have asked EMC, what if we can bridge the Windows application and storage complexity gap? That is in fact what is ESI. Let's take a look at ESI for Windows. It's a MMC snap-in. The layout consists of three sections. On the left hand side we have a tree kind of structure. In the middle we have we provide details. On the right hand side we have action that we can apply on ESI. Uh, in the middle section we can add storage, list all the storage. As you can see we support all the three platforms, add host, add cluster disks. Let's go ahead and add a storage system to ESI. Let's pick CX4 and provide a friendly name, um, provide all the connection details and add, there you go, we've just added the CX4. Let's drill down into the CX4. We have the storage pools and the RAID groups. Looking into the storage pool, you can see all the LUNs it's made up of. Looking at the VNX, as you can see, it supports both block and file. In the file view mode, it lists all the file systems that are available and all the shared folders that have been pre-created for it. In the block view, we can take a look at all the storage pools that are available for a VNX platform. For a given host, you can see all, all the drives are mapped all the way to the storage and the associated LUNs. In this next section, let's go ahead and create a disk. Let's invoke the create disk wizard. Choose, choose a storage system. Then go ahead and pick a storage pool like the silver pool. Provide a name and the size. Pick a service node, thick or thin. Next, we provide a volume label and assign a drive letter. You can go ahead and review all your input parameters. We start to create the LUN. We unmask the LUN for the host server. We rescan the bus. We initialize the disk um, and then provision the volume. And then we go ahead and create the drive. There you go. We just created the drive letter F. Let's go ahead and verify using Windows Server Manager whether the drive was created in fact or not. In this section we will mount a SIF share, create a new one and mount it. As you can see for this host there is one network disk that's already mounted. Let's go ahead and mount a shared folder. Pick a storage system. Select a file system one of the shared folders, assign a mount path, provide the necessary credentials, review the input, there we have it. Let's go ahead and invoke the create shared folder wizard. Select the storage system, select the file system, use thin provisioning, Select the data mover, provide a folder name and folder path and assign a size for the folder. Click next, assign a mount path, review the inputs, it creates the shared folder and then mounts it. There we have it. Let's verify with Windows. In this session, we will provision storage for a failover cluster disk. 
click the host cluster registered with ESI. It lists the three cluster disks that are part of the host cluster. In this host cluster, we have two nodes. Let's go ahead and add uh, a cluster disk to these nodes. First, we pick the storage system, namely the CX4. We go ahead and pick a storage pool, assign the size, thick or thin, give a volume label, then assign a drive letter E. We also have the option of adding the cluster disk to the cluster shared volume. We start creating the LUNs, unmasking the LUNs to all nodes in the cluster, rescan the bus, initialize the disk, partition, format, and then add the disk to the cluster. It's that simple. As you can see, we have now added our new ESI demo cluster disk 1 to the cluster. Now let's verify using failover cluster manager. As you can see, we we have the drive letter E, which is our newly created cluster disk. ESI empowers a SharePoint administrator by mapping SharePoint web applications to storage and simplifying the task of provisioning storage for SharePoint. Let's add a SharePoint farm to ESI. Give a name, select the local farm. As you can see, it just discovered two SharePoint web applications. Drilling deeper, you can view the site collection information in the content database. In the storage tab, you can map the underlying content database information to the storage. Let's go ahead and create a SharePoint web application using the easy to use wizard. In this form, you provide the IS website information, provide the necessary size information, the database name, assign drive letters for the data file and the log file. Here, provide the necessary credentials for the application pool security. Select a storage array, the underlying storage pool. Review the information. As you can see, we start creating the data disk, the log disk, the content database, and eventually the SharePoint form. This norm normally takes a few minutes. As you can see, we just created the SharePoint web application. Let's check with the SharePoint console. Refresh it. There it is.